Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video uh, is going to walk through how to produce error bars uh, through IBM SPSS statistics. And like in the previous, uh, uh, the previous videos uh, where we created histograms, uh, we created scatter plots uh, and so on, what we're going to do is we're going to rely upon the SPSS sample file and that's provided with the default SPSS package, which is the employee data set. And like in uh, the previous videos, let's just, let's just remind ourselves what variables we'll be dealing with. Uh, the first variable of interest is, is, is the gender variable, uh, which speci specifically uh, just, uh, I suppose, uh, references whether a particular individual, an employee within the organization, is male or female. Okay, so it has two levels of measurement, um, male and female. Uh, another variable that we're going to be interested in is the job category variable. Uh, we've got three job categories. Uh, we've got three levels of manage measurement on this particular variable. Uh, we've got manager, we've got clerical, and we have custodian. Uh, and the next variable that we're going to be interested in is the salary variable. The salary associated with each individual employee. For example, this employee record number six uh, was a male. It was born in 1958. Uh, the job category is that this employee is a clerical worker. Uh, their salary, their current salary, is $32,100. Uh, when they began this particular job, their salary was $13,500. Uh, the amount of months that they have on the job is 98 months. Their previous experience, experience was 67 months before joining this particular company, and so on and so forth. But anyway, this video is just going to concentrate on, on producing a, a particular type of graph known as an error bar. Okay? Uh, so once again, like in all of our previous videos uh, that were generating graphs, we're going to go to uh, the graph menu, okay, which is at the top of the SPSS uh, window. So we're going to click on the graph menu. We can go into chart builder, but for these videos we're going to rely on legacy dialogues. And once we get to legacy dialogues, we'll scroll down to error bars. And what we'll do is we'll just choose error bars. We'll click on simple error bar and we'll go define. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is let's just do the error bars for all employees, okay, uh, with respect to current salary. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take current salary and we'll place that into this particular field, which is uh, labeled as variable. This is the variable, the main variable that we want to actually see the error bars for. Uh, and for category, all we do is we'll just put in company into category because all these employees are, are members of the same company or work for the same company, uh, Acme PLC. Uh, so they've all got category one in relation in relation to, in relation to company. Okay. Uh, in relation to this dialog, this dialog uh, box here, there's a number of different types of error bars that we can produce, uh, and they're defined here in this drop down list. So we can produce confidence intervals uh, for the mean. We can produce standard error for the mean, and we can also produce error bars uh, that represent standard deviations around the mean. Okay. But let's just go with the default at this stage. We will produce all the rest of them, yeah? Uh, and let's produce a 95% confidence interval uh, for the mean salary associated with this particular organization. Okay, so that's it at this stage. All we need to do is we just need to hit it OK. So once we hit OK, we get the pop-up window. And what we can actually see here is an error bar for Acme PLC. Uh, the important uh, points to, I suppose, to highlight here with respect to the error bar is that this circle here represents the mean salary for all employees within Acme PLC. And you can see that the mean salary seems to be coming between 34,000 and 35,000. So the mean salary seems to be in around $34,500,000. Okay. Now, this is a confidence interval that's been built around this particular mean value. Uh, we set it as a 95% confidence interval. And what that's telling us is this, is that we're 95% confident that the true population mean associated with, with where this sample has been randomly drawn from okay, would have a value between $33,000 and $36,000. Okay. Let's just say that again. Uh, this particular data set we're assuming is a sample from a, a wider population. Uh, the mean value is circa, it's at around $24,500. And the question is, okay, that's the sample mean. Uh, 
have we got any idea or have we got any particular type of estimate that would allow us to pin down a lower bound and an upper bound associated with the true population mean? Now this is what a confidence interval allows us to do. In this case we constructed a 95% confidence interval. Uh, the lower bound of the confidence interval is $23,000 and the upper bound is $26,000. So what we're saying is that we'd be 95% certain that the true population mean would reside between those two values. But let's just keep in mind that the true population mean could reside anywhere. Uh, so it might not be in between there, and it could be outside of these particular intervals. In other words, the true population average yeah, might be less than $23, or it might be greater, sorry, $23,000, or it might be greater than $26,000. But we'd only expect it to be within that particular region 5% of the time. Okay, so that's the first example. Okay. Let's actually delve down a little bit deeper into relate in relation to these particular confidence intervals uh, for the ACME PLC salaries. So once again, let's go back to graphs, legacy dialogues. Let's choose error bar, simple error bar. Let's say define. And instead of looking at all employees and creating a confidence interval for the for the current salary of all employees, let's remove that over there and let's have a look at, at gender. Okay, so this should produce two confidence intervals, one for males and one for females. Okay, so what we'll do is, once again, we've defined our main variable of interest, current salary. We can put any continuous variable in here, any scaled variable, and our category is gender. Okay, so and we've already defined it as confidence interval for the mean at a 95% level. So let's hit OK. What we get out is we get two confidence intervals. Okay. Now, so again, just interpretation here is that the round circle represents the mean. Uh, so in relation to the female distribution, okay, the mean is positioned here, which is just slightly above $25,000. Uh, the confidence interval lower bound is at $25,000 and the upper bound seems to be about $27,000. So what we can actually see is, with respect to the mean, the confidence interval is very tight around the mean. Uh, which which would suggest to us that, well, compared compared to the male distribution, okay, you can see that the confidence interval is a lot wider. Okay, but I mean, in both cases, this interval with the upper bound and the lower bound uh, would give us an upper bound and lower bound of where we would believe the true population mean for males would reside. So what we're saying is a true population mean for males would typically be, be between just under $40,000 and just under forty-five thousand dollars, and we'd be ninety-five percent confident about that particular, about that particular claim. Uh, okay, let's just uh, let's continue. Uh, let's this time let's go to graphs, legacy dialogues, error bars. There's other options that we can choose. Uh, we could create intervals that are based off standard deviations. Okay, so let's just choose standard deviations as an example. Uh, the multiplier uh, here allows us to choose the interval based on a certain number of standard deviations, plus or minus. Let's just choose one. So one standard deviation above and below the main value. Okay. So once we do that, what we actually get is we get error bars that look something like this. Once again, in the female situation, you can see that one standard deviation above and below is quite small relative to the male distribution of one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean. What this would suggest to us is that the female distribution is quite slender, okay, compared to the male distribution, which is quite broader, okay. Uh, but the interpretation is the same. Uh, the male distribution, the average, seems to be in around forty thousand uh, dollars. One standard deviation below seems to be in around twenty-one thousand, twenty-two thousand dollars, and one standard deviation above seems to be in around uh, about sixty-one thousand uh, dollars. Okay. Uh, with respect to the female distribution, one standard deviation below the mean seems to be just below twenty thousand dollars, and one standard deviation above the mean seems to be uh, between forty and forty thousand dollars. Okay. Actually, let me just roll back up here for a moment, yeah, to the to the confidence interval calculation. Now, we're not talking about hypothesis testing here and tests of difference, but an alternative way to actually find out whether there is a significant difference between between groups associated with a dependent variable okay, is to look at the confidence intervals. If the confidence intervals overlap, that would suggest that there's no difference between them, or there's little evidence to suggest that they're different. If the confidence intervals don't overlap, that would be evidence 
uh, to suggest that the actual the actual means of these particular populations that the samples have been drawn from are actually different to each other. So you can actually see in this particular case here uh, that there would be that there would be evidence to suggest that the average salary of females is in fact less than the average salary of males. Now, if we undertook a hypothesis test, either an independent samples T test or a Mad Whitney test, depending on the shape of the distributions, uh, then the results of them particular hypothesis tests uh, should also, uh, I suppose, support what we're seeing here from a graphical perspective. Yes. Okay. So the final types of type of uh, interval that we can do error with our true error bars is looking at the standard error of the mean. Okay. So once again, we go back to simple. Define the set of standard deviation. We'll choose the standard error of the mean, and let's hit OK. Uh, and in this case here, the standard error of the mean is got to do with the sampling distribution. It's it's actually the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Uh, the smaller the standard error, yes, uh, the the less the the mean. The, the more not not necessarily the more confident we are in respect to the mean value, yeah. But the less error that we've observed in relation to the samples that we have drawn from the population. You can actually see that the standard de the standard error of the mean or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution for females is actually quite slender or quite small compared to that of males. Okay. So guys, that was three examples of how to do uh, standard uh, how to do error bars through uh, IBM SPSS statistics. Uh, just once again, what we looked at was a typical 95% confidence interval error bars. We looked at, uh, I suppose, looking at one standard deviation above and below the mean. We could go for two or three standard deviations, depending on what you want. Uh, and we also looked at the, the a plot of the standard errors associated with the standard error of the mean. Okay. Uh, the variable doesn't have to be gender. The variable can be, the independent variable can be anything at all. Okay. But in this case, we just chose gender. It would be the same process for another particular type of independent variable. Okay, guys, uh, once again, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Support, uh, Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope this was somewhat helpful.